Welcome everybody, it's Debbie O'Neill of Scribe Me Quick Designs and today's tutorial is about using the new Cricut Easy Press Mini that is coming out in September to change this plain old canvas tennis shoe into a custom work of art using iron-on. Oh my gosh guys, I have the best tips to share with you so that you can have great success too and using the new Cricut Easy Press Mini. So let's get started. Okay everybody, let's talk about the supplies that you're going to need to make your own custom tennis shoes. So of course we're going to be using the new Cricut Easy Press Mini because it was made specifically for us to be able to get around odd shaped projects so that it makes it so much easier to apply. So it's perfect for working on canvas tennis shoes. Of course, you'll need a pair of canvas tennis shoes, whatever you want to use. And um, I think I picked these up at Michael's actually. And then you want some white tissue paper. Do not use color tissue paper, white tissue paper. We want a bunch of it. We're going to shove it into the shoe so that it gives enough firmness that when we go to apply our iron-on, it's going to give us something hard to press against when we apply the iron-on, okay? So you'll need that. I also recommend you have a lint roller handy because canvas shoes tend to pick up lots of lint and dust and so forth on them. Um, and you wanna make sure that your shoe is clean before we start to apply the iron-on, all right? Now, for the iron-on today, I'm gonna to be using three different kinds. And I'm going to be using the Cricut Everyday Light Iron-On, plus I'm going to be using the Cricut Glitter Iron-On, and I'm going to be using the Cricut Glitter Iron-On Mesh that's new and um, is going to add a lot of fun to my tennis shoe. And of course, you'll need a couple of tools. So you will need a weeding tool and you will need a pair of scissors. And before you, when you start to design your project to put on your shoe, of course, you're going to need to figure out what size you need your image. I recommend that you use a flexible tape measure and that way I was able to kind of determine how large did I need to make my designs in design space to cut out to put on my shoe. The other tip that I had for you is that once I kind of got an idea of what I wanted to use, I actually cut my pieces out of cardstock first just to make sure that I had exactly what I wanted it to be and that it would indeed fit where I plan on putting it on my shoe. Okay, for those of you that are new to using iron-on on your projects, I, there's a couple of things I wanted to remind you. One, when you go to cut your object, you need to mirror your image and you do that on the design space screen. You need to have a sticky mat. Now this is a fairly new standard grip mat, so it's sticky. Your iron-on has a plastic lining over it, which is the carrier sheet is what they call that. And this is what we're going to be putting our Cricut Mini against to heat it up, okay? So this is the protective coating. So this stays on your iron-on and you're going to flip it over and that shiny plasticky side is what's going to go down on your mat. So the back side of your iron-on is now facing up at you. That's why you need to mirror your image. And you just want to make sure that this is rubbed on your mat very well so that it will stick while it's cutting out, all right? And you'll do that for any type of iron-on that you're working with. They all have a plastic carrier sheet. This one, you can see how shiny it is on that side and it's dull on the other side. If you've not weeded vinyl before, it has now, since you mirrored your image, the shiny side is is the liner and you can see your image. See, I have a little football there. And then the back side is the part that's gonna get uh, laid against your object and it looks dull, okay? So there's the shiny side and the dull side. You're gonna weed from the dull side. And I just use my little Cricut uh, weeding tool to get up the edge and then I'm just gonna peel this off, okay? So that's what weeding is, is taking away the excess that you're not going to use. So once you've weeded all of your iron-on vinyl, I like to just take my scissors and I trim around the plastic lining so that there's not a lot left around the edge. So it just helps me better with placement. So, and then I like to kind of lay my images out. So I know where they are and they're not sticking together. Now I did want to mention that one other thing that I used that I found helpful was I put a lot of 
images on here that are kind of close to the bottom edge of the tennis shoe, like this word go. So I use some of the Cricut heat resistant tape that they have out with the infusible ink products that right now you can get at Michael's. What I could do was just put a piece down here along the edge of where the rubber is on my tennis shoe. And then that way, it, I didn't take any chances I was going to melt that. But I also found it helpful for working with some of the curves to hold the pieces in place. So this is the shoe that I completed. Just so you guys have an idea of what we're going for. What you wanna do is you wanna start with your tennis shoe, whatever canvas tennis shoe you're using, and you wanna put stuff it full of white tissue paper. Okay, so this was super noisy when I tried to do it on camera, so I'm saving your ears by, I've already shoved it in here, but I really pushed a lot of it in there so that this is very firm, so that when we go to put our iron on on, it's going to really help us with that process. Okay, so once you get it stuffed full, then you wanna take your lint roller, and we're going to roll the tennis shoe just to make sure that we get any, you know, maybe it's got dust on it or lint on it or whatever. And we don't want any of that on our project. I can already see it coming off on the lint roller. We don't want that to prevent us from getting a really nice stick. We got that done. Then it's time to get our easy press ready. A little bit different than the, than the traditional easy presses that we've been using. In your box, you get this little get started guide and it's gonna tell you that this little icon here is the power button and the heat setting, okay? So when you push it down, the first level is on low. This, if you push it again, the second lit up is means it's on medium. And if you push it again, the third level means that it's on high, okay? When it's red, that means that it is warming up. And as soon as it warms up, it will turn to green. So that's what we're waiting for. But we just need it to be on medium for all of the types of iron on I've selected here, it's on medium. Now Cricut will have a, I'm gonna set it here while we wait for it to turn green. Cricut will have a heat guide that will be just where you see the other uh, Cricut Easy Press and Easy Press 2 heat guide. There will be a selection for the Cricut Easy Press Mini and it will give you the temperature, um, which high, medium, or low you need to use depending upon which type of iron-on you're using. So with the, with the everyday iron-on light and metallics, with the glitter iron-on and also the glitter mesh iron-on, it said for me to use the medium heat setting. So that's why I'm gonna be using medium and uh, you will uh, be able to see that once this comes out September the 6th, that heat guy will be available for you all, all right? So that's how that works. Now it has turned green. Hopefully you guys can see that. Now it's really hot because green means it's probably of 330 degrees or so. So it's very hot, so don't touch the bottom of it. I am using my Cricut Easy Press mat here just in case I don't quite get it down into the little holder here or something. I want to make sure I'm protecting my desktop. And now we're going to do the first thing. I'm so excited. All right, so I did want to show you guys that you can layer regular iron, regular everyday iron-on, the smooth, right? You can layer that with some glitter iron-on. You cannot put glitter iron-on and then put this everyday iron on, on top of it, but you can put glitter on top of the everyday iron on. So I wanted to show you guys that process. Now, first thing you want to do is you want to warm up the area where you want to put your, put your um, image. And this is so handy because it fits right in there. I cannot tell you how much easier it is to do this with the Easy Press Mini than when I tried doing this with the big, with the, even with the six by seven, Easy Press uh, last year when I tried to do it. Okay, so I'm gonna lay it on here. And then what I found helpful was I used some of that heat resistant tape. Now you cannot use any regular tape. It needs to be a heat resistant tape or you're gonna have a melty mess on your hands. So make sure it's heat resistant tape. It doesn't have to be the Cricut brand, but of course, the Cricut brand is what I'm using because that's what I have on hand. Okay, 
So I just put a couple of pieces on here to help hold this on because it's at kind of an odd angle. All right, now we're just gonna put it on. Now this is different than the regular Cricut Easy Press. With the regular Cricut Easy Press, you can only set it down on one position and then you need to leave it in that one position. This has been made so that we can actually move it around and it's got a little fine tip on here because as you can see here with my Texans Spanish Bull logo, there's a lot of little um, points on here and I'm able to really get in there with this Easy Press Mini and get that heat because the heat is even across the bottom of the Cricut Easy Press Mini. And I'm just kind of rubbing it on there. Now it does say that you would hold this on for 25 seconds or so um, in each spot. And I tend to wait until I see that it is lifting from the liner so that I know that the liner starts popping up when the material is stuck to the base. You do want to be careful. You don't want to burn yourself. Um, so I'm just very careful about where I have my hands that are holding the shoe. And if you were really worried about that, that you could always use one of those, um, they have these like heat resistant iron on mitts that you can wear. I have one, but I just find them to be very bulky and I didn't really want to hold that. So far, I have not burned myself. <laughs> okay, now I'm just going to turn the shoe around. So that's another tip for you guys. You know, make sure you're turning your shoe around to help give you the best hold and you're getting everything on the edges of whatever you're putting on. This is kind of a bigger image. Okay, that seems to be adhered just fine and I'm gonna peel it up. I've got a little part right here where I need to stick it on a little bit more. So that's the beauty of this. You can get right in there and work any little areas that seem to maybe need just a tad more heat. The, the little tip on this bowl is very hard <laughs> to get that to stick down. Okay, so you want to let this cool for a second and then you're going to peel it up. Usually I wait till it's, you know, cool to the touch. And I'm going to lay my next layer on. And I need to turn this so I can see it. So I'm going to lay this here. And I'm going to go over it with my Easy Press Mini. And stick it to the bottom of that where I just put the white background on. Because it was already warmed up, you really don't need to hold this on there for the 25 seconds. I'm really just kind of heating it up to see that it is adhering well. And then I have a second layer, which is glitter iron on that I can layer on top of this. But I need to wait till this is cooled down and I can peel that up. If you start to peel it up too soon, it's going to come up off of the bottom layer because you need to let this cool down. It's a cold peel. Now, the Cricut Easy Press Mini does have a, a, an auto shut off timer. It's about 13 minutes or so before it will shut off. So leaving it here for a minute is not gonna cause a problem. And there we go, I've got that layer on. Now I'm gonna put on my red layer here. Now, of course, these could be any images you want to use. I'm just doing this because I wanted my own Texans custom tennis shoe. I had seen some online that someone had made, a manufacturer had made. They were $85. I was not going to spend $85 on a custom tennis shoe. <laughs> I just, and cheap, I would not do that. When I knew that eventually I would make some for myself and this little mini easy press is what is blowing my mind right now that I can make my own custom shoes. So now I have the first image is on my shoe. That was super easy. You would never have been able to do it on this gentle of a curve with the regular easy presses. They're just too big. 
All right, so let's do the next thing. So I wanted to try some words on here to show you guys that it works good with words too. So there again, I'm going to warm up the area over here where I want to put it on, just to warm it up like five seconds. Now, I know that this image that I want to lay here, and I'm going to layer another image underneath it, is going to come fairly close to the edge of where I have the Houston Texans number one on my shoe. It's pretty close to that bottom edge. So this is where I was telling you guys, I use some of the heat resistant tape along the bottom edge so that you do not end up melting your tennis shoe because <laughs> that wouldn't be good. And I just stuck some down here like that. Okay, just a little piece just to keep it in case my hand slips or something goes on. So I'm gonna put the number one on first. And I'm just gonna leave that on there like so. Now, hopefully you're getting all kinds of ideas of, what, of things that you could put on your own custom tennis shoes. And you can use a lot of different iron-on materials. I have made a um, ball cap that I'm going to show you guys that I'm super excited about. Now I'm just going to layer, I've got the number one on, now I'm just going to layer the word Texans kind of on top of this and go back over this. And I'm going to turn the shoe around so I can get it just a little bit better. Now I've got this really shoved full of tissue paper, okay? As I'm doing it, if the tissue paper is shifting around on me, I'm able to just kind of push it in with my thumb and really get that tissue paper in there so it's giving you a nice hard surface. Okay, and you can see I'm just moving this around where we would not be able to do that with a regular easy press or even a heat press. <laughs> just to make sure I've got it in all the little nooks and crannies, the heat is applying that glitter vinyl. Now I'm using all Cricut iron-on. The Cricut Easy Mini Press is made to use with any iron-on type, so whatever is your favorite, but I really love the Cricut iron-on. It works great for me. I've never had a problem with it. I've used it for a long time. Okay. So now we've got Houston Texans and I can take off this bottom edge here where I was protecting my shoe. And I can reuse this piece a couple of times around the bottom of the shoe so you're not wasting any size. Now how about if we do something across the toe of the shoe, okay? So there again, I have a lot of tissue shoved into the toe of the shoe and I am going to use the Everyday Light Iron-On and I'm going to put a football on here, and then I'm going to put a little heart on here because I love football. And it's a little bit of a curve, so what I like to do is on these really curved parts, add a little bit of this heat-resistant tape on there to help hold that in place while you're applying the heat. It made it so much easier on these curves, and I'll pick this up and show you how I did this in just a second. Okay, so I just wrapped this around the shape, the toe of the shoe, and I put a little piece of the heat resistant tape on each side of it to help hold it down. So it will stay in place exactly where I wanted it. And then I can come in here and put my heat on it. Okay, so I am just slowly adding heat on here. I'm not pressing super hard. You don't need to press hard. It's light pressure. Okay, and I will flip the shoe around so I can get to the other side here. I love the handle on this because it's very easy to hold and control. And the fact that I can get in such tight little places on this curve. Look how easy it is just to manipulate that contour on this shoe.
Okay, and now we've got the football on. Woohoo! And now I'm going to put this is the Cricut uh, iron on glitter mesh. And I'm going to do the same thing where I'm going to add just a tiny bit of the tape on here. It doesn't take much, but on these more curved areas, it really helps. Okay, so same thing with this. We're going to start on one edge of it, and I'm just going to rub it on and start applying that heat to all areas of the image. There is the, the front of my shoe is done. Now we're going to do, now we're going to work on the side of the shoe. So there again, I want to really push in the tissue paper. That is the secret here. It's it, keep manipulating around tissue papers cheap if you need to add some more in there add some more in there you can even do the sides and we're going to do the back of the shoe too here in a minute so so we've got the side of the shoe there again I am repeating adding the footballs on here I'm going to use, reuse that same piece of tape where I'm I may get too close to the edge of my tennis shoe when I do this because it's kind of low on this shoe so I'm going to cover that piece up so that when I go to apply this, it's going to stay in place for me. And it is not going to accidentally get on the edge of the shoe and burn the rubber. I know someone's going to ask me, I found this little uh, pink tape holder. They come in a bunch of different colors. I found it on Amazon. It was perfect for this. So I know that this is my heat transfer tape and I don't get it mixed up with my regular tape. Plus, it makes it easy for me to grab it. Okay, there again, I'm just going to rub this along the edges, all around the image here. I am going to add the heart here is going to go there as well. And I can just take that same piece of heat resistant tape and put it along the edge over here, just so I don't melt anything there. I'm going to add this, then we're going to do the back of the shoe. So you guys can see how easy it is to go all the way around your shoe. If you need to push your finger in and get a little more firmness along the edge there with the tissue paper, do so. But this is a miracle. I mean, I'm not kidding. I'm so excited about this little mini easy press. I have been wanting something like that for a long time. I bought other little mini irons and they just were either awkward to use or they didn't heat up well enough or I don't know, I just didn't like using them, and they didn't just do the job. So I am really happy to see that this mini easy press is doing the job. Okay, so there again, I'm going to put something across the back of my shoe. So I want to make sure that I have pushed the tissue in there, and you can just, you know, manipulate the same tissue <laughs> that you already have in there, and just push it until it's really firm on this back edge here, okay? Now I already have this cut out and weeded, of course. And I'm gonna lay this on, and there again, I want to use a little bit of the heat resistant tape to keep this in place because it is on a curved area. Because it's canvas, the um, stickiness from the uh, iron-on the heat transfer vinyl is not sticking to the shoe as well as it would on a, like a t-shirt so it needs a little extra help there okay now i get fairly close to the edge of where these letters are here on the bottom to the edge of my shoe so guess what yep i'm going to use that same piece of heat resistant tape and put it along the bottom edge of the shoe just to make sure that i don't get any heat there i don't want to melt the bottom of my shoe and i'm just going to go ahead and start applying heat And look, I can turn this and really get into the little crevices, get into the edges of the design and really work that around. And as you can see, I'm not, I am moving it around to apply the heat evenly across it. I found that starting on the edges and kind of working your way into the middle kind of helped. And I'm going to turn this. And I want you to see exactly what I was doing. I didn't want to fast forward this part. I wanted you guys to really understand what we were doing because I want you to have success 
if you try to do your own custom shoes. Be sure and leave me a comment in the description of the video so that you, so, and tell me if you're going to try to make your own custom shoes now that you've seen me do this. And what would you put on yours? What would your design be? Are the shoes for you? Are they for a friend? Are they for the kids? I think teachers would love this too, where you could customize shoes for them to wear on pep rally days and things like that, where they get to wear their school t-shirts. Ta-da! Okay, there you go, guys, around the back of the shoe. That was super easy with the Cricut Mini Easy Press. And I cannot wait for you guys to make your own custom shoes. Let me know if you have any questions. I'm happy to answer them for you. The Cricut Mini Easy Press will be out September the 6th. I will put a link in the description of this video. Thank you for making your purchase through Cricut.com because that helps me out a little bit, support my channel. I have a lot of other videos uh, coming up where I'm showing you how to use the Cricut Mini Easy Press. And please share my video, let others know. And thank you so much for watching and happy crafting everybody.